In week one of men's five-bit play, Regina's Kevin Clark made the most of his opportunities, and he became our first semifinalist. It's the Canadian Bowling Championships on TSN. We're at Frank Sisson Silver Dollar Bowling Casino in Calgary. Men's five-pin play week two, as we say hello, Canada. Welcome back to Calgary. Bill Douglas alongside. Look, I think Kevin Clark would be the first to admit that uh, his game wasn't the best, but uh, he, you know, Brad Glenn didn't really put a lot of pressure on him. Having said that, though, to give him his due, he did make the marks when they were needed. Well, absolutely. I think that's partially the experience. Not only big match play experience, but also TV experience. He hit the head pin eight times the second game, only had three strikes, but he had four spare opportunities, made them all, and that was the difference. When he had an opportunity, he basically shut the door. Now in this uh, second week of men's five pin play, we have a couple of TV veterans and a couple of newbies. So uh, let's take a look at who we're gonna see. Quebec's Sylvain Bercier is one of the young stars graduating to the adult ranks. Sylvain averaged 294 to win the Quebec provincial title. Thunder Bay's Daniel Taylor is making his first appearance in an adult event. The 14th seed will draw on his four national YBC appearances. Cranbrook's David Gourlay is no stranger to TV bowling. This will be his fourth appearance. He has 37 years of experience to draw on, including a perfect game at the age of 13. Southern Ontario's Chris Babiuk is another young YBC graduate making his mark in the adult ranks. Gold in NBA team play and a perfect game on his credit. We mentioned uh, last week when we were just looking at the overall field that six of the uh, 16 players had no previous TV experience. So what's the key if you're here for the very first time? Maintaining focus, kind of disregarding the lights and the crowd and everything else. Play your own game, stay focused. And maybe disregarding us too. Maybe. Lots of money up for grabs, of course, in the Canadian Bowling Championship. If you win it all, $10,000. Total prize money, twenty-five grand. All part of the Canadian Bowling Championships on Canada's sports leader, TSN. So we had the two opens to start, back-to-back -back spares, and now another open in five for an 80 count through five. Daniel Taylor now with a spare in four. Fifth frame here. This is an opening. He needs to take advantage. We say this so often, but it's the truth. Absolutely. Good count back on that spare. Second chop off of the match. Spare holds the ball really high in his stance position, but nothing forced. He's a big guy at 6'2, so one of the things you got to guard against a little bit is having that uh, really high backswing. Uh, can have a tendency to speed the ball up again and change your timing, but uh, he'll drop it from here to the bottom of his swing. Nice controlled backswing. Boy, it's almost silent, isn't it? You can barely hear it hit the lane. He's very smooth to the foul line, and he gets in a great position to release the ball at the foul line. Third chop off uh, of this game, and everyone has been, he's taken out the left side and left the right 3-2. So again, it's all about little adjustments, no strikes. A one mm -hmm. strike so one far. Start, yeah. yeah. And then no run. I mean, he had this, has two. Now he's headed towards an open. Chance to put something together. Well, both uh, Daniel and uh, Sylvain are graduates of the YBC program. It's the, it's the foundation for so many bowlers. You start young, and this is the website. Uh, if you have any youngsters that want to go, you can look on and click at the bottom there. Go on. They've got all kinds of games, and they'll. If you're looking for a bowling center in your area. It's youthbowling.ca, a wonderful website, youthbowling.ca. This is Sylvain Bercier. Better shot that time. 
looking for a string pull and didn't get it. Still a tight match, mm -hmm. five frames in. Again, uh, it's anybody's to win here. If one of these two players can get on a roll, get some strikes, put a couple back to back, they can uh, take charge of the match. Yeah, that's exactly it. There's nothing there to suggest. Nobody's really gotten, as you say, on a roll. Take control, put a couple of strikes together, and in fact, you could bury somebody very easily. Especially as we're running out of frames. So yeah, we're in the sixth. Yeah. A couple of strikes in a row here will make a huge difference well, in this so match. Now he's got the spare up. Bercier now in sixth. Taylor stopped his string with an open. So advantage for the moment to Bercier. If he can put another mark up here. Lots of time on the approach for Sylvan. Making sure, keep the focus. Oh, that's too bad. Thought it would come off the wall. Yeah, that uh, he's thrown two really good shots back to back. Left hand pocket. Little bit of a backup, and he's left the right corner pin on both of them. Watch the movement here. Uh, just drives that head pin up over top. Do you ever coach anybody to speed up that you can be too slow? No. no. That's always a function of uh, the size of the player and length of their arm and just what they're comfortable with. It's all about pace in the approach. Making sure that the speed that you, you take as you go through your approach is, is comfortable and consistent. Uh, there's no bonus really for throwing the ball hard or being fast to the foul line. So Mercier puts back-to-back -back spares on the board. Taylor now coming off his open. Forced that one at the bottom of the swing. Almost looked like he was trying to speed it up and throw harder. Again, the swing should be like a big pendulum. Don't change the speed anywhere through it from top to bottom. Better shot yeah. that time on the inside of that spare. And he got it out in front. And there's the, uh, the spare for him after his open. So both bowlers now with spares up. Good reaction this time. A little bit of a backup. Right hand pocket. Bowling ball takes out the three pin and the two pin. 22 pin advantage for uh, Taylor. Through six, both with spares in seven. Still anybody's match, Vic. Doesn't you know, look comfortable there, though. I mean, that just looked like it was off balance, maybe overthrowing. Uh, I don't know. It can be speed to the foul line. He's got a little bit different three-step approach than most. His first step is virtually non-existent. It's kind of just a little setup. And he's got a really long slide. And again, you change uh, bowling centers and that slide. Unless you get comfortable with it, it can throw your timing off just a little bit. Well, because of each approach, each center having a different consistency in their approach areas? Or? Absolutely. Really? And the difference okay. between synthetics, the, the type of finish they use on the approaches, whether they're buffed, uh, all kinds of things. It can be humidity. Mm. Uh, all of those things determine on how you slide. So after the spare, he comes back with a uh, 15 and 8. Question then might be right out of a little weird. In, in curling, for example, the curlers now have developed all kinds of different sliders from plastic. Some use steel, some use uh, Teflon, all, all depending on, again, their approach to the hog. Would you, in bowling shoes, are there different materials for the slide? Uh, absolutely. Uh, most of the shoes being manufactured today, at the high end of the scale at least, you have replaceable soles and replaceable heels so that you can you don't have to alter your slide you change your footwear to make sure that you slide consistently the same no matter where you go so if you see a if you're in a center where it's not consistent you go and put a different slider on exactly oh good you can give yourself more or less slide there's teflon 
uh, inserts that can be used if you find yourself on a sticky approach. Uh, change the heel. Well, here's this little bit of consistency we were looking for from either of the bowlers. Garcia now back-to-back -back strikes. So that's four marks in a row. Two spares, two strikes. By comparison to Taylor, who's had a 15, a spare, a 15. And Silva and Bercier, this last four frames has started to look a lot more comfortable on the approach. His release has been great. Evidence in the score, two right corners and now a double. Mm -hmm. His advantage going home. Yeah, so Taylor really under some pressure here needs to find something and he just can't find that head pin. Missed the middle now four times in nine frames. And all of those misses, he's missed to the left. So again, with that backup, he's not getting the movement he expected on the ball. It's not coming back to the pocket. Uh, here's, again, the experience. You know, mm -hmm. this is a different kind of lane condition. Uh, different than maybe what he's used to. That time the ball moved a little bit, got back to the head pin. Well, he's not going to be very happy with that. I mean, it's one thing to you know, make mistakes and punch head pins, but when you're missing them, uh, uh, this many times, it really makes it uh, tough to have a good game. Your counts aren't very large, and you just put yourself in really awkward positions to, uh, you know, your scores don't get that large. Mm -hmm. There's a potential of 213, and his uh, league average at the Superior Volodrome in Thunder Bay is 240. can't find it, can he? Now he got off to a good start, at least hitting the middle. He was four for five in the first five frames, hitting the head pin, and had marks. Just the end of the game, it yeah. seemed like the, the change maybe, uh, you know, Sylvan jumped up and started to take advantage of those opens and hit the middle. So with a couple of strikes up and eight and nine, Bear CA needs 20. No, oh, just that, a, just that was a great shot. Yeah. Got it out on the lane, good lift, good rotation, broke up that possible head pin. And so he will uh, move on and play either Dave Gourley or Chris Babuick. And again, you know, so often happens. You know, both Pierce A. Taylor sort of struggling, sort of mediocre to that point. And then he just found his rage, Pierce A. in six. Spare, spare, strike, strike. Another strike in 10, now the chop. But he just found the elusive consistency. Well, he got the range in the first five frames. Ah, he was okay. He had two marks, but he only hit the head pin twice in the first five frames and then seemed to get more comfortable with it. Great finish. Yeah, a little smile from Sylvain Bercier, whose league average is 260. He bowls a 253 to take out Daniel Taylor. And now he'll sit and wait. It's Gourley by Buick when we come back. So it's a 31 point advantage for the Buick through four, and both with opens. Now fifth frame for David Gourley. Uh, more loft that time, a little more lift than the ball uh, with that hook or curve broke away from the head pin. First miss on first ball on the head pin for either of our players. I want to be on the inside on this one. Uh, tough.
tough break there. Almost got it knocked over, but a uh, little bit thin in that pocket, and the ball skipped by the corner pin. Well, nice job to get the count, and so, but it's back to backs, and a chance here now for uh, Chris to uh, take advantage again of this opening. 115 for Gourley, the two opens. Chris now with the advantage. If he can put a mark in, he'll increase his lead. Wow. He's solid, though. Uh, at the foul line. Big high backswing, long slide, oh my. and big loft. Ball's turning over great into the pocket for him, though. Works as a land surveyor for ER Garden. Plots out a lot of the uh, condo projects. And yeah, he has a perfect game to his credit. As you can see, the way he throws the ball, he gets a lot of strikes. And then now taking a quick glance at the scoreboard. Knows he's got a bit of a lead, but he's going to have to make sure that he picks up all his pins here. And the count back in the strike in the fifth. I'm gonna go after the big side, try and count 12, or 13 rather. does. Uh, he got oh, the big goodness. break, too, coming off the back cushion. Kicks out that left corner pin. A little bit of the result of the rotation Look on the that, ball man. and the speed. That's, oh, boy. That's actually the corner pin, mm -hmm. I think, that's all the way over to that left side. Forced to get the eraser out here. And the, and the 13 mark down. Ouch. Two head pins in a row for Dave Gourley. And again, just that little bit of pressure maybe from Chris. Uh, Dave throwing the ball. Uh, maybe a little bit different. Head pin in the fourth, missed the middle in the fifth, and now a head pin here in the sixth frame after he got off to a great start. Mm-hmm. Yeah, three marks, and now three opens for Dave Gourley. And 130 to 169, a Buick leading. Now this match is a long way from over. Four frames left here for Dave Gourley, but he's got to put something together. A strike here in seven would be huge in getting back into this match. That's the pocket he wants and the kind of reaction he wants. Got good lift and great location. Dave works as a armored car guard for BNL Security. Now Chris to respond. Strike here to maintain his advantage. I'm going to ask you something about his that long slide because his shoulders are almost I mean I always always believe that you should be square at the line when you watch his shoulders they because of the slide I mean he's almost facing left it's almost like a golf rotation uh, it is and it, you know there's nothing wrong with that as long as you do it the same time every time it's all about repetition release, and it's a release point i guess too isn't it it is he's consistent in his release he's consistent at the foul line and slide and his arm swing and everything else the problem with those sort of uh, extremes if you like is if it's pretty easy to make a mistake but hard to correct 
That's a bad, uh, the tough frame for him because he only scores 10 for 179. Gourley has a strike up in seven. Well, two head pins in a row here for Chris. That's my ball. Got it out on the lane that time. A little bit further. Good rotation on it. Right hand pocket. A little bit thin and going away. Watch the ball turn over. He just catches a piece of the head pin and both the five pin and the three pin go in front of that left corner pin. there first left corner of the match he had missed a right corner in the back in the fourth frame Dave Gourley now with a chance to get back into this match double here in eight and nine he'll actually take the lead in the game Got the extra pin count. Yeah, before the uh, the gate came down. But you could see the difference. He wasn't solid at the foul line when he released that ball, and he pulled it off to the left. You yeah, know, the uh, judge of play is ruling that it the head pin should stand, and so. That's good for a spare. He picks up a few pins in this match. He's now down 19 through seven frames. And both have spares up in eight. What happens that ball? That's on his spare shot. Catches the outside edge. Strike spare. He's within 19 of Chris Babuick. Sylvain Bercy is waiting to see the field play. I'll get the there it goes. There it goes. Foundation frame comes through with a strike. And a great shot. Right hand pocket, which traditionally is not the best for Dave, but he gets a really good reaction. That three pin up off the wall gets a string pull. And he'll take that one all day long. Match it. Oh, wide of the head pin. Push right. Never had a chance to get to the pocket on that shot. Yeah, it's good for him to get the spare. There's nine points or nine pins separating the two. A Buick leading. But the difference is Gourley with a strike up in nine, Fabuic with a spare. And the difference is going to be that spare strike differential in the ninth frame. Chris Fabuic here in the tenth frame. He's got a possible 274. Dave Gourley has a possible 280 if he can strike out in the tenth frame. Well, he'll take that a little bit thin mm -hmm. left side, leaves the corner pin. Spare needs it in the tenth frame. He's right on it. I mean, it almost goes without saying. As if you're Babuick here, you want to put as much pressure on Gourley as you can. You know, and you've seen Gourley. He's come back two strikes and a spare in his last three. He may now have it dialed in. May have found the range, but you got to get him thinking. Strike here. And he forces Dave Gourley to get the first strike in the 10th frame. Oh, bad break. Good shot, though. He's forced him to get that first strike. So a 2.55 for Chris Babuick. Dave 
Gurley with 190 in the eighth. Strike up in nine. Needs the first one here in the tenth. Strike. Needs a strike. Got it. Oh, great lead tap. Oh, my. Another great break. This time off the side wall with the three pin. Kicks out that left corner pin. Watch. I mean, you're waiting, and there it comes. Ah, great reaction. Oh, yeah. He knows he needed that one to win this match. He's got to have more than five in the next two balls to win this match. That's a great shot again. On the head pin, but on the side. And that's enough to put him through. Gourley will advance to face uh, Sylvain Bercier. So responds to the pressure. Absolutely. Again, a little bit of experience. The combination between TV experience and match play experience. Good finish for Dave Gourley, who survives three open frames in four, five, and six to bowl at 263. But again, it's the big comeback in the last five frames of this match. Strike in seven. Made a great shot then in eight, nine, and ten. Dave Gourley. There it is. Maybe it's the lucky TSN ball that he's using. Dave Gourley, Sylvain Bercier. One of these two will become our second semifinals in men's five-pin play in the Canadian Bowling Championships on TSN. Gourley coming off a terrific, it was one of our better games, and said to you, uh, Phil, enjoyed it very much, his win over Chris Babuick. Oh, just a great finish in the last five frames from Dave Gourley. See if he carries it on. Makes a good shot. Just a little bit high on that head pin in the left-hand pocket. Basically drove it straight back behind the right three pin. Is anything around the head pin then a good shot? Or does he... Because, again, it comes back to the psychology of the sport. You don't want to plant the negative. Would he have expected more off of that? Do you, are you disappointed you didn't get the strike if you're around the head pin? If you're around the head pin, you want to see the best reaction you get. If you make a good shot, you get a chance to get a strike. You know, it's, it's about hitting the head pin, and then it's making little adjustments to make sure your percentage of strikes goes up. Last game, Dave hit the head pin nine times, and he got five strikes. That's a percentage that most players would take, 50% strikes. And if you can eliminate or start to lessen the number of head pins or punches you get, still give yourself opportunity for spares. That's where you get a chance for the big games. So Van Bercier in his opening game, his win over Daniel Taylor, got off to a slow start. He had a couple of opens, a 10 and a 15, and might be looking at a, another open here. He came on strong at the end of that first game as well. Seemed to find kind of a comfort zone. Uh, got his rhythm down. Solid at the end of the game. Didn't try and slide that one over. Just content to take the five on the left-hand side. Count 15 and be even after one frame. It's all about, in some cases, not leaving any pins on the pin deck. We saw it a couple of times in the women's where, you know, bad counts off of head pins. The nines and the tens were, ended up being the difference in the match. shot split comes back with the thick right hand pocket chop off 
So now this one is about making maybe a really minor adjustment, half a step uh, sideways or move up or back, just change the angle of entry into the pocket, get away from the splits and the chop-offs, get them to be strikes. And the adjustment made, so uh, follows up his open with a spare there, C.A. Back to that left-hand pocket. Now, a little bit of a force, maybe. He was right on the nose on that one. That's two in a row. He's been, obviously, the head pin, but the chop-off even, that was thick, and just the rotation on the bowling ball broke it up. So back-to-back -back opens for Dave Gourley. Either Dave Gourley or Sylvain Bercier. Gourley from Cranbrook, B.C. Bercier from Gatineau, Quebec will be our second semi-finalist. Gourley with uh, two opens, 15 and a 13 to start. Still thick, isn't he? A little bit better though that's uh, that's three in a row he's hit the middle all three of them have been thick at least this one again he breaks it up a little bit leaves himself uh, right corner pin should be easy spare he was two for two on right corners in the first match in that 263 ouch again big open frame unforced error Chop off in the first, punch the three pin out here in the third, right corner, and misses it on the inside. And you compared that to his uh, game with Buick uh, when he had a uh, strike, spare strike. And not off to nearly as good a start. He's thrown the ball as well, he's just not getting the break. So, again, we'll talk about changing lane conditions. The longer the lights are on, the more bowling you have on it the more it changes the condition. Now's, for a, an experienced bowler, now's the time to make those little adjustments to now get Bear, strikes. Bercier with a spare up. Made a little adjustment in the swing. Now, might need a little more tinkering. Now again, that one just skidded by on the left-hand side. He's got to be careful about the speed. The harder he throws it, the less it's going to break. bit of a break that one was really thick on the middle on the left hand side on the outside of this spare stands up a little bit at the foul line but three pin took out the corner pin back to back marks though for Bears here has the advantage of two Shot yeah. out on the lane, a little bit more turn, and I like the speed this time in his approach to begin with. But also, that's just a great release. Little movement into the pocket. You could even see it just in, in his reaction when his hand came up. He was, you could, he, he almost signaled the fact that he even liked the release. I knew he got it in. Yeah, he knew he got it in the right location. That's better for Dave Gourley. Good answer. Solid at the foul line again. Right hand pocket this time. Ball turns over and takes out the right side. Needs a double here to put some pressure back on Sylvain. Oh. Big break that time. Good lift and good turn. 
Again, he's breaking up some splits. This one's right almost dead on the nose, but this time you'd see how much turn the ball had on it instead of skidding and going to the right side. It actually stayed the course when ended up right in the middle of the pin deck. Second time he's missed the middle in this match, Sylvain. And both of them, they he's pushed them to the left. I almost got the sense there he tried to steer it. Well, again, that, that's a little bit of what can happen to uh, some of the younger players. They're trying to force the ball or steer it, as you say, into the pocket. Match virtually even now. Dave Gurley working on a double in four and five. Sylvain Bercier now up in the sixth frame working on a spare. shot that time. I was going to suggest to you he may have expected more off of that. Well, I think he expected a different reaction from the bowling ball. He got it in the spot he wanted it to on the lane. It just broke pretty hard on him. Mom and Dad have come to Calgary to support him. Sylvie and Gerald Bercier, we welcome them to Frank Sisson's Silver Dollar here in Calgary. And Gorley is uh, Davis turned it around after the three opens with back to backs. Sylvain with the spare up in five. Uh, tough break on that chop off. Punches the three pin straight back. And that again, we've seen the players little bit on the extremes when they're shooting corner pins we've seen them slide by because of the amount of oil uh, stay the exactly where they are you know they, they got to get used to the, the fact that there's more oil on the outside of the lane the ball maybe skids further on them than they're used to so let's see what Dave Gurley can do now he's got a couple strikes going here Again, an opening. Can he take more advantage of it? Oh, there you go. Great That's shot. Super. Left hand pocket again, a little bit thick, but he's got such great rotation on the ball. Solid at the foul line, gets it out on the lane, turns it over. He's carried quite a few that have been a little bit thick and on the edge, but. It's all about getting the ball out on the lane with rotation. In his third appearance on TSN, two previous pins games. He was eliminated in a first match. Stands the right corner. So this is a, this is a big series for him. He's, he's taken the first step here, looking to become our second semifinalist. Uh, he just throws a great shot here, but a uh, hook into the right-hand pocket. And because of the deflection, Bowling ball goes by the right corner pin. This time, no question, missed a right corner pin spare back in the third frame, but uh, solid right on it in this one. Now through six frames, Dave Gourley with the advantage and a spare working in seven. Sylvain will get up here in seven and eight needs a double here to get back in the match. Coming off his open. Uh, much better shot though that time. Again, similar to the ball he threw back in the fourth frame. A little bit more movement into the pocket that time, but ball just skips by the left corner pin. three opens in the first six frames. Got to make sure on this corner pin. And just, and just. 
Now those gentlemen are all members of the uh, Bowling Proprietors Association of Canada. The gentleman on the extreme light, uh, left rather, is Arnie Rollins. He's the president. Always nice to see them. Bob Randall, Mariana McChoney, Kyle Hare, and Brian Sargent. Eighth frame, Sylvain Bercier. Must have strike. Almost forced that one. That's his first head pin in a game in three quarters. Very, very inopportune time to punch a head pin. Looked like he might get back in this game, but we'll put a halt to it very quickly here. Another open for him, a 163 through 8 for Sylvain Bercier. With the 10 count. And you're right. I mean, look what he's facing with Gourley. Three strikes and a spare up in seven. And Sylvain Ber Bercier with a maximum possible 253. And I'm sure Dave's got it calculated exactly what he needs. And got it dialed here now. Oh, yeah. Just freewheeling, that's a great shot. Starts to, it started to look more comfortable the more this game went on. First three frames, he never had a mark. Now these last four frames, five frames, he's got four strikes and a right corner spare. Not quite the same slide at the foul line. Seemed to throw him off just a little bit. So, I mean, the best he can do here is a, a 15 count, an open frame. Give Bercier still a chance? Uh, it does, slim. Uh, as I said, Sylvain's got a possible 253. Uh, Dave, if he picks up 15 here, will be 231. So he'd need a mark in the 10th frame to make sure of the win. <laughs> Just squeeze the, the right corner. Good count, and he knows every pin is mm -hmm. critical now. So it's 231 for Gourley through nine. And checking the scoreboard. And Sylvan, I'm sure, is, uh, has checked it as well. He knows he needs four in a row here to finish if he hopes to put any kind of pressure back on Dave Gourley. Has he got one here? No. Uh, got a little bit of a break off the back wall, but uh, Spare's not going to help him. Now he's uh, reduced to a 238 possible. Picks up the spare. This one has just been about uh, inopportune misses for mm -hmm. Sylvain. Opened the sixth on a chop off and then punches in the eighth frame. Never really got it going. No. That's better ball. Half smile. That's probably the best shot he's made this whole game. And another one. Hmm. A little bit looser. More free wheel. Funny game. He knows it. You can just see it. He's shaking his head here. Come on. Now another punch, 
third one of this game. And it's uh, not enough. So he trails as he sits down. He pulls a 228. Gourley already has 231 in his pocket. And so Dave Gourley will become our second semifinalist as he plays out the 10th. Wow, another good shot and a break again. David's had a couple of those. And we call them breaks, but it's all about making good shots, getting the ball to the head pin, and having something on it. This time, right hand pocket, and he gets a string pull. A little better reaction when he's in the right, uh, the left-hand pocket, but... Uh, but isn't it interesting, the same kind of scenario as in the win over Bebuick. You know, in seven, he picks up the strike, and then he marks all the way out. Look what he's been able to do here, and, and he had started in four. Three strikes in a row. In fact, he had four in five frames. And then the open. That might have hurt him, but he didn't get a challenge from Bercier, and he picks up two more strikes in ten. It's just... He was able to put something together where Bercier wasn't. Well, exactly, and it was all about the pressure being put on him. He had those three open frames to start, but Sylvain never got anything going. In the middle of this game, it's all about Dave Gourley. Four strikes in five frames. Dave Gourley from Cranbrook, B.C. becomes our Megan second semifinalist. Dave Gourley, the armored car guard from uh, Cranbrook, may need some of his co-workers because he's still alive to take home the $10,000 first prize. Gourley becomes our second semifinalist. Be sure to join us again next week when we join you again from here in Calgary. Frank Sisson, Silver Dollar, Bowling Casino, Men's Five Pin Play, the Canadian Bowling Championships on Canada's sports leader, TSN.